Hello and welcome back to Beautifully Bookish Bethany where I have new videos every week about books and the geeky mom lifestyle. In today's video I am starting my new moon weekend reading vlog. It is time. It's another weekend. I read Twilight. I will link that vlog up above if you haven't seen it yet. I am critically rereading more than a decade later the series and vlogging my experience. So um, I'm going to start New Moon. I do have it on audio for my library and I will again be flipping back and forth between the audiobook and the physical book and I will update you guys once I've made some progress and let you know how it goes. I will say this, New Moon originally was definitely my favorite book in the series. Partly I think because this book made me feel very seen on the page. The way that Stephanie Meyer describes Bella dealing with depression was very much what my experience of depression was like and so I think that's part of why this book in particular was pretty meaningful to me. Um, that said, it was a very long time ago. I am super curious to see what it's like now. So I will update you guys more in a bit. Popping in real quick with a book recommendation. As I mentioned in my Twilight reading vlog, for each of the videos that I do in this series, I'm going to be recommending to you a book by a person of color that deals with vampires or werewolves. So if you haven't seen the Twilight reading vlog, I will link that up above for you to check it out. My recommendation for you today is one that's on my personal TBR and I have heard a lot of really good things things about it, although I know some of the content it can be a little difficult to deal with. This is Fledgling by Octavia E. Butler. If you are not familiar with Octavia Butler, you definitely should be. She is a huge voice in science fiction and fantasy and is a very prominent Black author who wrote in those genres, and Fledgling is her vampire novel. I know from hearing reviews of it that this one does have some difficult content to read, but that it's also very interesting interesting. And in this, they don't call themselves vampires. They have another word for themselves, for their community. I have read some Octavia Butler, really, really loved what I've read. And this is one that I am hoping to get to soon. So if you are looking for another option of getting some vampire lore into your reading diet, I would recommend you go check out Fledgling. Hey guys, so I am listening to the audiobook as I walk to uh, get some donuts because it's Saturday and that should be fun. Um, also, can we talk about the fact that Edward basically says he would have committed suicide if Bella had not survived? That's great. It is such a beautiful day today. I am really happy to be out and walking, listen to my audiobook as I go. Hey guys, so I am a little more than 100 pages into New Moon. And honestly, I'm loving it. Um, I am remembering why this was my favorite. And I think it's really the emotional arc that Bella has internally. At least for me, this book made me feel seen in a way that I hadn't previously. Her experience with uh, responding to a nasty breakup and also with just dealing with depression is very much what mine was like, which was a lot of sort of feeling nothing but trying to put on a good show for everybody around and act like everything was fine and normal, but really like not feeling anything. <laughs> that gets depicted here so well. I don't know, I don't know if I've ever read anything else that I can think of that I felt this way about emotionally. Um, so again, we're only like 100 pages into it. But yeah, something about reading this before had been really cathartic. And even now, like I, I, I am very much connecting with it. And like, I'm sure there are people who would say, look, this is really unhealthy. She shouldn't be this depressed over having a guy break up with her. And look, maybe that's true, but I also know that for me around that age, this is probably more like what my experience of nasty breakups was like, of it taking a long time. And even if it didn't technically go on for quite as long as it does for her, it felt like it did. I know not everybody's the same, but like in hindsight, I definitely as an adolescent dealt with chronic depression that came and went for various reasons, not just because of guys, but yeah. Anyway, all that to say, so far, I am loving New Moon, even though it's difficult in some ways emotionally to read, just because it resonates with me a lot. And it's interesting to me that even so far in the future, where it's been so long since I've had the experiences here, it's bringing me kind of right back to what that was like and what the experience of reading this book for the first time was like for me. Anyway, um, 
I do have a few things I've tabbed, so I'll go over that, but I will say that so far at least, I'm finding less things that I'm as concerned about here. That said, I know she ends up going to the reservation for a while, and it is entirely possible that there's problematic content with the way that the Quailuti are depicted, and maybe some of that is stuff that I wouldn't have noticed or realized at the time, and I'm curious to see how it goes now, because I know that that's a big concern in general. And part of this too, for those of you who don't know, is that recently there was some information that came out about some racist stuff with Stephanie Meyer when they were casting the films. And I'll link that article down below if you guys haven't seen it. It's unfortunate. Some of the problems have been to do with the film franchise, to do with the way that she didn't want people of color cast in it. You know, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of problems with her, um, but I will say that the reasons that I loved this book in particular still very much feel that way to me. All right, so let's check out some of these tabs. I got kind of distracted, but we're here. Okay, so um, we started the book with her having this dream nightmare, really, about her getting old. Uh, which, you know, like, yeah, the end of the world is to get old. Come on, people, really? Yeah. This I thought was interesting. There's all the stuff about her not wanting Edward to spend money for her, um, just in terms of, like, power dynamics and it being unbalanced, which I think is a valid concern, especially as a teenager who's not used to money. This is the thing. She always seems to think so sort of negatively about herself, which is part of why it'd be interesting to see what Edward thinks. Um, he looked like she's looking at a photo of the two of them together. He looked like a god. I looked very average, even for a human, almost shamefully plain. Um, and she's like disgusted with herself. So like that internalized sort of dislike of herself seems unhealthy. And I will say the fact that like she's feeling that way, even in a relationship with somebody else, like she's got some things she probably needs to work through. I mean, I get it. I probably sometimes felt that way as a teenager, but, um, yeah. Again, we are not using Native American, and I know, um, the Quiludi are gonna play a bigger role later on in this book, so I'm curious to see sort of what that representation looks like. The note I put here was this sounds a lot like gaslighting. Um, even though I know he's doing it for what he believes are the right reasons, is he sort of made it seem like he never existed, took everything away. Everything that he'd given her basically was gone. <coughs> hey, honey. Um, yeah, but it's sort of a bit like what gaslighting is like, maybe make her think that it never happened. But I think his intention is not to gaslight her. His intention is to try to make it, as he said, a clean break so it'll heal and she'll feel better. I gotta say, I think this is striking way of showing, like, the length of time. October, November, December, January, waking up. I, I like, I really like that. I think it does a great job of like hitting home with how time is passing and how it's affecting her. Here we have her dad having a very good idea of her seeing a professional and she does not like that idea. She may be right that you need to be honest for it to work, but also good on her dad. Maybe yeah, you would have been... Maybe it would have been good if he had pushed harder on that. Obviously, I think YA books today do a better good job of being a little more nuanced in the way they handle mental health issues. So that could be better. And then I love how her friend is like, since when do you listen to rap? I don't know, a while? You like this? I don't know if this is Stephanie Meyer not liking rap or if this is just like thinking it's funny white girls listening to rap. I don't know, guys. Okay, then we have this whole thing of like the deja vu. She runs into these guys. One of them was even short and dark. Remember from my last vlog when I talked about the whole issue of how we have this one guy who sounds like maybe he was black, maybe, um, trying to assault her. And then we have like a throwback to this issue and then i had forgotten that she starts doing this that she starts like taking risks so she can hear edward's voice even though she doesn't think it's real um i will note this she says there was an indefinite implied kind of menace to these men that had nothing to do with that other night and i think this is kind of interesting it's, it seems like it's probably a mixed race group of men 
but um, you know, I think maybe this does speak to the issue of like the menace not only from men to women who are threatened with sexual assault, but the way that particularly black men are often seen as a threat. Uh, you know, whether that's specifically what she meant to say here, I don't know, but it definitely feels like maybe one of the implications. And then the last thing I wanted to note for now is this, which I think speaks back to what I was saying earlier. The trade-off was the never-ending numbness between pain and nothing. I'd chosen nothing. And again, um, yeah, like I, this definitely is relatable. So anyway, this is where I'm at chapter five so I will continue reading. All right I have made some progress. I'm not quite halfway but I'm like 200 something pages in. How far am I? Like 225 pages in. I love Jacob so much. He's so wonderful and um like a good friend and a good guy and I really wish that he was endgame for Bella. He's absolutely precious and I love him a whole lot. Yeah, like I am continuing to really like this a lot. It does have a few issues here and there which we will talk about, but um I I just I love Jacob. I love their vibe. I love their friendship. I think it's beautiful. It's going to be so sad that things end the way they do. I kind of hate it. Okay. Um let's look at the new tabs I've got. All right, so we have her seeing Jacob for the first time. Uh, she describes his skin as red-brown. Just, just why? Like, there are so many better words for that. Why red-brown? It just sounds terrible. Okay, I, I don't know. Not a huge deal, but annoying. One thing that I noted here that I think is unfortunate is that Bella only seems to call Jacob when she needs something. And so the first time she contacts him again is because... She wants to have these visions or audible hallucinations or whatever of hearing Edward yell at her. So she decides to ask Jacob to help her fix up these motorcycles. And that's what brings them back into contact. And so, it, I mean, it's kind of shitty of her. The only time she contacts him is when she needs something. Said so he's just like wonderful and lovely and deserves better. We've got some kind of dumb gender stuff. Jacob and his friends are excited about the bikes and she says I'd have to have a Y chromosome to really understand the excitement. Come on now. I'm sure there are girls who are into this stuff too, but whatever. I mean, this was like typical fare for back in the day. Okay, this was super irritating. We have a very brief introduction to Leah, who is a senior. She was beautiful in an exotic way. Let's let's never use the word exotic again to describe non-white beauty. Um, she's beautiful. Then you can describe her. There's no reason to say in an exotic way. Like, is that a lesser way? <sighs> Yikes. Okay, it's like all this little stuff that all adds up. Um, then again, with some of the like weird gender stuff, she's finally like getting it back together, finally becoming normal again and um, noticing what's happening with her friends. And Lauren had a pixie cut so short that the back was shaved like a boy. What an odd thing for her to do. I wished I knew the reason behind it. I mean, like, who cares if she cut her hair off? And like, why does it have to look like a boy just because it's shaved in the back? I mean, remember guys, this was not that long ago. This was written in the early 2000s. Plenty of teen girls were wearing their hair like this, so okay, whatever. Case in point of how she really should have just liked Jacob. I felt much, much healthier around Jacob. This was not a healthy thing to do. Yeah, she continues to feel healthier around Jacob. She's more mentally stable. He's a good friend. He cares about her. I'm like, girl, why Edward though? Why? Don't understand. Come on. This is something I want to do a little more research on. I I don't know what to think about some of the depiction of native people. They have this issue of a scary looking guy from another reservation, big scary looking selling meth to kids. Um, there's like all this stuff here and I feel like probably there's stuff wrong with it, but I don't specifically know what it is. So I will be, I can tell you before like the live show, I'll be doing some reading and, um, reading some own voices, critical analysis of some of these issues, but I just wanted to point out like something feels off about it to me, but I don't know what it is because uh, yeah. Okay. I don't know if I mentioned this in the Twilight vlog, but there were also some things about calling her albino as like a joking thing, which 
like isn't actually funny and we get that in here again okay so I am at chapter 10. I will keep reading. Um, I'm feeling a little antsy, so I think I might move back over to the audiobook. I've been reading this physically, but I kind of want to move a bit, so maybe I'll go for a walk, listen to the audiobook again, make some more progress. I mean, I, I just fly through these. They're very quick to read. I will. That's definitely something in their favor. this book a lot like new moon I'm really enjoying it um more than halfway at this point I'm about 300 pages in and she just found out that Jacob is a werewolf I just love Jacob so much <laughs> the one thing that I have tabbed on page I think like 274 is there's definitely an instance of her dad using his position as a police officer in a way that feels kind of problematic um, I understand that he's pissed off for his daughter, but he basically threatens to be keeping a closer eye on the native boys that Bella is concerned about. And like the way that that's handled, again, given everything going on right now, definitely does not feel okay. I'm otherwise really enjoying this. I love Jacob. Um, he's such a sweetheart, such a cinnamon roll, even with like trying to deal with becoming a werewolf and finding that out and all of the trauma that goes with that. Um, looking forward to continuing on with this book. Can we just like rewrite what happens next and change the story? This is where I could see the appeal of writing fanfic. <laughs> Hello, so it is Sunday afternoon. I have finished New Moon. <laughs> so um, we're going to talk about it. I read some more last night and then I finished it up today and I also spent a little bit of time looking online at some websites that have information about the representation of the Kailuti people, the Native Americans in this series and um, it was definitely interesting and enlightening and so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of that. I think you'll probably be hearing more about that also in the live show for Twilight and New Moon which is linked down below if you are seeing this prior to it happening. Yeah, this this was interesting. Lots of tabs. <sighs> Where to start with this? I'm gonna go through some of my tabs in the book, talk about some of my overall thoughts. First up, and this relates to some of what I was looking up online, is on page 350, she hangs out with Emily and Emily is working around the house, doing housework. And Emily is also the one who was harmed and her face was severely damaged from her husband or maybe her fiance at the time who was the leader of the wolf pack um, getting angry and harming her. So this I think ties into some things that I think were addressed in some of the critiques I've seen from Own Voices people in the Quiludi, which does present some problems. You have the women in the tr in the Native American tribe mostly following what are traditional white gender roles where the women tend to be at home, they tend to be submissive and subservient, which we can talk about how that's a problem in general, but one of the critiques of this is that in Kwailiti culture and in many Native American tribes, that is not the role that women traditionally take. Women are often leaders, they can be on the tribal council, and how problematic it is that that's the way that women are depicted. In addition, one thing that I wasn't aware of is that Native Americans have a very high rate of being victims of domestic violence and domestic abuse. And so to have a character in New Moon who was the victim of domestic violence and it's kind of brushed off and glossed over seems to be pretty harmful. Another thing that I thought was really interesting that they pointed out, which in hindsight, I'm like, oh yeah, I see that, is the way that class disparity is portrayed. You have the Cullens, who are the vampire family, who have a fancy house, fancy clothes, very wealthy, fast cars, and then you have everybody living on the reservation who have small houses, tattered clothes, 
not enough money to buy new shoes, and just generally portrayed as this sort of like lower class group of people and how harmful that can be, especially given like the way that the story ends up going. The other thing we can talk about is the misappropriation of their culture and taking bits and pieces of it, completely changing and fabricating other things to fit this narrative. I will link this website down below if you guys want to go and look at it and do more of your own research. I thought it was pretty interesting. But one thing that they do note is while the Quileudi creation myth does include wolves, they don't have anything about actually being werewolves or about the cold ones and kind of the harmfulness of appropriating their culture. Anyway, so um, there is all of that. I think in general reading the later part of this book in some ways is kind of sad for me because now <laughs> reading it like reading it the first time I was so hopeful that Jacob would be endgame and now reading it back again and seeing all of the ways that she ties it into Romeo and Juliet it's pretty clear that I was wrong it's pretty clear that Edward is where it's going as much as I hate that and to be fair I also don't like Romeo and Juliet so it makes sense why I wouldn't really like the way that this takes. But there's like comparisons of Jacob to Paris because they're like enemies and Romeo killed Paris, even though that's like not how things end. Uh, yeah, and like the angst of, oh, but I will die if you are not in the world um, has just never been my favorite thing. I really wanted Bella to be like, oh, Jacob makes me feel so much better about myself and about my life. Maybe he's who I should be with, but no. <laughs> okay, so moving on with some of my other tabs here. One thing that I think is interesting about New Moon is we get to go to Italy for the first time and see the Volturi, which they're really interesting. I think they actually make pretty great villains because they're complicated and their motives are complicated. And so I think that was pretty well done. One thing to note though is they have some humans who basically serve them in hopes of being made vampires and again you have this issue with like people with dark skin being in these subservient positions. Um, they describe a woman that they see who's human. She was tall with dark skin and green eyes. She would have been very pretty in any other company but not here because she was every bit as human as I was. Um, so again I just, it's it's a repeated issue here. Another thing that I noted is finally Edward and Bella are back together. They're having this conversation about how he feels about her. And he says, before you, Bella, my life was like a moonless night, very dark, but there were stars, points of light and reason. And then you shot across my sky like a meteor. Um, when you were gone, when the meteor had fallen over the horizon, everything went black, etc. So it's their entire worlds are completely wrapped up in each other and then what's interesting is Bella's dad gets pissed off at Edward for coming back and rightfully so because as a result of Edward's behavior and choices his daughter had been super depressed for months and months and months and yet Bella is not very understanding with her dad at all she's just mad at him for not understanding that clearly Edward is the love of her life and they are a package deal period. I just, it's, yeah, I don't know. Another thing that I think is funny is she totally freaks out because she's excited initially because Edward promises the Volturi that he will make her a vampire, make her immortal. They're curious to see what will happen with this gift that makes her immune to them if she becomes a vampire. And that's why they let her go and don't kill her. And so she thinks finally, I'm gonna get what I want. I'm gonna be a vampire and be with Edward forever and not get old because that is the worst thing that could possibly happen. Um, and so he's like, oh, well, they'll probably forget about it until you're like 30. And she's like, 30? 30? You're gonna let me get old? <laughs> like, girl, first of all, 30 is not that old. But uh, yeah, she's like determined to stay a teenager. Uh, I just, it's silly. Um, and again, like she continues to have this thing of feeling like, I don't trust myself to be enough to deserve you. There's nothing about me that could hold you to Edward where, cause he's questioning why she so quickly believed that he didn't love her. And she's like, well, I knew it didn't make sense. 
And she's like, well, it didn't make sense for you to love me in the first place. So of course, like, why, why would you? What, because he's like beautiful or something? I don't know. It's, it's frustrating to see that. Meanwhile, she never questions whether Jacob loves her. She never questions whether she's good enough for him. And like, there's so much more evidence of like, why are you not with Jacob? Why are you not with your best friend? Come on now. Okay, so then he finally agrees. Okay, I guess I'll do what you want and be the one to make you a vampire, but only if you marry me. And she is very resistant to this idea. She does not want to get married at her age and she knows her parents wouldn't like it. And he basically like pressures her into it and is like dangling this thing she wants in front of her, which is also a problem. I think like Edward was never my favorite, but reading this back again, I really don't like Edward all that much. I'm still curious to see what we get from his perspective, but I, I just want to rewrite the series. Okay, so last thing, on page 550, there's this line, which I think just like epitomizes everything that for me is wrong <laughs> with the direction of this book. She's thinking about Jacob and Edward. The fairy tale was back on. Prince returned. Bad spell broken. I wasn't sure exactly what to do about the leftover unresolved character. Where was his happily ever after? Um, and like, uh, fairy tale is back on. This is not a great fairy tale. <laughs> it's not a fairy tale. Like this is, it's, it's not great. And then Jacob is suddenly just a leftover character who needs his own happily ever after. And as we all know, the way that he eventually gets that is kind of very messed up. So, um, okay. This is New Moon. I, how do I feel about this book? I definitely would say that I liked this more than Twilight. I, I'm, I'm leaning towards like three stars. For sure emotionally connected with what it was like for her dealing with depression and the emotional experience of that. I still think that that is done really well. I think that the world she has here is really interesting. Everything with the Volturi. I continue to think Alice is just a fantastic character and like all the family is just great. But there's also a, a lot of problems. There's a lot of problems with the Native American representation. There's a lot of problems with gender dynamics and the way that those things are being handled. I don't like where the story is going. Um, yeah, three, three stars. Like the, this, this is probably going from what was maybe like a four and a half star read to like a three star read. So not as bad as Twilight, probably not as bad as some future books are going to be, but um, there it is. New Moon. <sighs> Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts or feelings on any of the stuff I talked about in this vlog and let me know if you have reread this, how you feel about it. I would be curious to hear from you. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.